Donald Trump crushed Kamala Harris in the first presidential debate. He did what he needed to do. He was strong. He pushed back on Harris's points. It was Kamala Harris who's been running behind this entire time that needed to make a mark. She didn't do that. And today we'll be taking a look at the updated 2024 electoral map after the first and possibly only debate between the two major party candidates. We'll start off by filling in the solid states for both candidates. These are states that either Harris or Trump are going to win by 15 percentage points or more. I'm going to start off with the state Republican states. Trump is easily going to win in Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, all of Nebraska except the second district, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Indiana, South Carolina, Alaska, and the second district of Maine. This gives him 126 electoral votes. While for Kamala Harris, she's going to win in Washington, California, Hawaii, as well as Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maryland, the District of Columbia, and the first district of Maine. She trails with just 109 electoral votes. Moving on now to the likely states, these are going to be noticeably more competitive, although one candidate will still maintain a strong advantage. So we're going to begin with these states that Trump is going to win by 7 to 15 points. Beginning in the Midwest with Iowa and Ohio, two states that Trump has completely transformed since he first entered politics nine years ago. In 2012, Iowa and Ohio were still very competitive. They voted for Obama. Eight years before in 2004, they both went to George W. Bush. But in 2016, Trump shifted Iowa 15 points to the right and Ohio at nearly 12 and he won both of these states by likely margins. In 2020, when people said Joe Biden could win Iowa or Ohio or at least make it more competitive, Trump won these states again by virtually the same margin. In 2022, the Republican governors of both Iowa and Ohio won their re-elections by solid 20-point margins. On the presidential level, these two states are going to be more competitive, but there's no doubt they will go in favor of the former president for a third time in a row. Moving down south to Texas, we have a Another state that Democrats thought they could win four years ago, Joe Biden in the end didn't really come close. The polling said Trump was only going to carry the Lone Star State by 1%. He ended up winning by six times that margin. And today he's on track to winning it by at least double digits. He might even win it by over 15. But for right now, we will place Texas in the likely red column as no Republican has been able to cross that 15 point threshold since Mitt Romney in 2012. We have another huge prize for the former president, and that comes in the form of Florida. Another 30 electoral votes. This is a huge gain for Republicans now that Florida is no longer competitive. For three decades, this was the ultimate battleground state. Whoever won Florida almost always ended up winning the election. That didn't happen in 2020, though, when Donald Trump won Florida by a larger margin than he did in 2016. In fact, this was the best performance for any candidate of any party in the Sunshine State in 16 years. And in this election, Trump is probably going to win Florida by more than seven points. It's going to be the best performance for a major party nominee in a presidential election since 1988. The Sunshine State is going to be the final likely red state State on our map. And so with just these states that Trump is going to win by seven points or more, he is already 51 electoral votes away from securing a second term. Before we continue, only 16% of you guys are actually subscribed, so please take the time to subscribe right now for more content like this leading up to the election in November. And follow me on Twitter for daily political updates. Link in the description below. Moving on now to the likely blue states. Many of these are just going to be states that Joe Biden won by solid margins in 2020, but that Kamala Harris is going to underperform in. First off, we have the state of Oregon. Fundamentally, this state just isn't as liberal as its two neighbors. We also have the Empire state of New York. Kamala Harris is on track to becoming the first Democrat to not win the state by a solid margin since Michael Dukakis in 1988. We also have a competitive race in New Jersey with these scandals that Senator Bob Menendez has been embroiled in over the past six months. Delaware without Joe Biden on the ballot is also going to be noticeably more competitive. And finally, we have the state of Illinois. This will put Harris at 181 electoral votes. And so now 
now we're left with the most competitive states in the country with a total of 138 electoral votes. All of these remaining states will be decided by margins of seven points or less. And if you compare this map to what we saw in 2020, you would see a significant change from where we were before to where we are now. Four years ago, states like Minnesota, Colorado, Virginia, New Hampshire, and Maine all would have gone blue already at this point. They all voted for Joe Biden by more than seven points. But Kamala Harris is not going to perform nearly as well as the incumbent president did in 2020. And so we're now going to fill in the lean states for both candidates. These states will be decided by margins of two to seven points. This is where you can really get these upsets. These states genuinely could go either way, but there is still one candidate that is favored. Beginning with the lean Harris states, we're going to start in Colorado. I have her winning by just under seven points. I don't really see a pathway to victory for Trump in Colorado, but it is important to note that Joe Biden carried this state by 14 points in the last election. It was so close to being solid blue, but just four years prior, Hillary Clinton only won the state by 4.9%. We're probably going to see a margin more similar to that of Clinton's than that of Biden's. And so Kamala Harris will get the 10 electoral votes, but it's going to be a lot more difficult than it was for her predecessor. We also have the state of Maine it's two electoral votes from the at-large tally is going to go in favor of the vice president. The state of Maine still generally does lean left. Even in 2016, when Hillary Clinton did pretty badly here, she still did come out with a victory. I would say Trump has a chance. If Joe Biden stayed in the race, he probably could be favored to win Maine at this point. But with Kamala Harris having replaced him, Democrats are slightly back on top once again, we also have neighboring New Hampshire. The Granite State's four electoral votes were even closer in 2016 than Maine. Hillary Clinton only won New Hampshire by 0.37%. It was closer than states like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Only Michigan was decided by a smaller margin in 2016 than New Hampshire. In 2024, Trump is probably going to do slightly worse than he did eight years ago, but he is still probably going to make New Hampshire more competitive than Harris would like to be. It's going to fall in the lean blue category. We saw Kamala Harris campaigning in New Hampshire last week. That is how nervous she is about this state. And so as of right now, we do have it going to Harris, but it's going to be one to watch as Trump has proven before he can be very, very competitive here. Coming back down to the southern border, we have New Mexico, a state the Democrats first flipped in 2008. Barack Obama won the state by 15 points. No Democrat has been able to outdo him since, not even himself, in 2012. And so New Mexico is only going to shift more and more back to the GOP as the state's Hispanic population makes up a majority of the electorate and Hispanics are generally moving to the right, as with basically every single minority group. And so Kamala Harris is on track to win New Mexico, but Democrats are going to slip here in the next few decades. It could go red as soon as the early 2030s. And finally, in the Midwest, we have Minnesota, a state that hasn't gone red since 1972 when George McGovern was the Democratic Party nominee. It was the only state that didn't vote for Ronald Reagan in his 1980 for a landslide over Walter Mondale. And so today, Minnesota is shifting to the right just like the other Midwestern states. This entire region is becoming more and more favorable for the GOP. But at this point, Minnesota is slightly more liberal than Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And with Kamala Harris having chosen Tim Wells to be her running mate, that is the only reason why she is the favorite. If Joe Biden had stayed in the race, Trump would probably be the favorite here. He can win in Minnesota. He's proved it before, especially in 2016 when he lost the state by less than two points. Nobody thought Minnesota was even going to be remotely competitive as in 2012, Barack Obama won the state by nearly eight points. And so today, Minnesota will be lean blue, but only because of walls. And so we're now left with just the eight most competitive states in the country, yes, including Virginia, as well as the second district of Nebraska. For Kamala Harris to win, she needs to win four states, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. There really is no other way around it. As for Trump, he only needs to win three states, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Georgia. These three eastern states will be enough to get him at 270. If he doesn't win them, he can also get there with one of the other Rust Belt states, along with some from the Sun Belt. And so I'm going to fill in the lean states for Donald Trump first. 
beginning in North Carolina. The Tar Heel state has gone red in both of the last two elections. Trump defeated Biden here by 1% in 2016. He defeated Clinton by nearly 4 Kamala Harris is not going to win a state that Joe Biden couldn't even win in 2020. Biden was a much stronger nominee in 2020, not in 2024. Obviously, in 2024, Biden was the worst person Democrats could have put up there. That's very, very clear. But in 2020, Joe Biden probably was the best nominee for the Democratic Party. And even then, he couldn't win North Carolina. Kamala Harris is not going to do it now. Moving on to two other key Sunbelt states, Arizona and Georgia. They were decided by incredibly thin margins in 2020. Georgia by 0.24%, Arizona by 0.31%. Today, these states favor Trump a lot more than they did last time. Joe Biden, who once again was the best person Democrats could have chosen in 2020, he won these states by basically the smallest margins possible. In 2024, Trump is in a noticeably better position. Four years ago, every single poll from these states said Joe Biden was going to win. Today, we have basically the exact opposite. Trump is the one that is favored in the polling, which almost always underestimates him. And so that is why Arizona and Georgia are both going to vote for Donald Trump for a second time after he lost it in 2020. They're probably going to go to him by 2 to 4% margins. Moving up to the Midwest in Pennsylvania, this will be the the last lean state. The Keystone State is actually where that debate was held, and the good news for Trump is that he performed well. Fracking is a major issue in Pennsylvania, and Kamala Harris didn't have good answers for that. If people fear that Kamala Harris and her possible administration is going to get rid of fracking, they're really going to steer away from her, and that is why I have Pennsylvania as a lean red state. I have Trump winning by just over two points. It could be less than that, but I do see him as the noticeable favorite. In 2016, Trump did win the state. He won it by nearly 1%. Joe Biden won it by a very similar margin in 2020. I have it going back in the Republican column this time around. And so we're now left with four states and one congressional district, all of which will be decided by less than two points. They're all going to be tilt in favor of one candidate or the other. I'm going to fill in the second district of Nebraska first. I have it slightly favored for Harris. I also have her on track to winning Virginia by the tiniest possible margin. Yes, Joe Biden did well here in 2020. But Republicans won the governorship, the lieutenant governorship, and the office of the attorney general in 2021, just one year later. Republicans are seeing a resurgence in Virginia. 2021 was the first time they won any statewide elections in the state since 2010. And so Trump is going to be very competitive here. But at the moment, considering the electoral history of the state, I do have Kamala Harris just slightly ahead. However, in Nevada, this is another state where Democrats should be ahead. They haven't lost this state since 2004. That was coincidentally the last time that Republicans won Virginia, too. But Donald Trump is now the favorite in the Silver State, a state he has never won before. He lost it by 2.4% to both Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden in the last two elections. But today, he leads in the polling average. He's been ahead throughout the entire year. I have winning by just over 1%. Donald Trump is the slight favorite in Nevada. And finally, Wisconsin and Michigan. Generally, Michigan votes to the left of both Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, while Wisconsin is the most conservative out of the three. But since Kamala Harris chose Tim Wells to be her running mate for Wisconsin, which neighbors Minnesota, it's probably going to vote to the left of Pennsylvania. However, that's probably not going to be enough for her. I do have Donald Trump winning both of these close states, just like he did in 2016. The Rust Belt tends to vote together, like he saw in 2020 when Joe Biden narrowly flipped these states back. But against Kamala Harris, I do see Trump performing even better than he did against Hillary Clinton eight years ago. And so after the first presidential debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, Kamala Harris did not do what she needed to get done. Donald Trump is still the overwhelming favorite in the 2024 election. He's on track to win 312 electoral votes to the vice president's 226. This would be the worst Democratic performance since Michael Dukakis in 1988. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe right now for more content like this leading up to the election in November. And join my Discord server. Link in the description below.